When we look at mixtures, we tend to separate the different components based on its physical properties. One of them being um, particle size, which uses filtration to separate the larger particles from the smaller ones. In this example, you've got filter paper, which only allows much smaller particles than the pore size allows. Therefore, the larger particles will be caught up in the filter paper and obviously the small ones will end up in another catchment area. Another popular physical characteristic that allows us to separate mixtures is using solubility, which acts on the basis that water can pull apart um, individual ions or particles and allows them to look like they are dissolved within the solution. However, not everything can be pulled apart by water. A step up from separating mixtures is known as gravimetric analysis. Um, by definition, this includes all methods of analysis in which the final stage involves weighing. For example, measuring the mass of solids suspended in water. Now, this can be determined by having a known mass of water, which is then filtered and the collected solids are weighed. In most cases, the substance being measured must be converted to a solid and is most likely dissolved in solution and therefore filter paper will not be able to separate it. This converted solid is known as the precipitate. Now this can be therefore collected by filtration, washed, dry to remove any traces of moisture and weighed. Now the amount of material can be then calculated from the mass of the precipitate and its final composition. It's a bit like wanting to measure how much meat they've added to your chorizo roll but remembering you can't include the chunks of fat as this will increase the weight. A common example is determining the percentage composition of a mixture of say barium sulfate and anhydrous sodium sulfate. Now this is definitely a first world problem because only chemists would really care about it. But anyways, anhydrous means that it is free of moisture because sodium sulfate loves to suck moisture from the air which will change its mass. This therefore means it's naturally soluble in water. But we want to know the percentage composition of this mixture. The first thing to do is obtain a small sample of the mixture. This can be achieved by first weighing a dry empty container such as a beaker, let's say it's 35.74 grams, and then adding your sample to the beaker and weighing it, so the beaker plus the mixture equals say 41.05 grams, the difference is the mass of your sample. So therefore our mass of mixture is 5.31 grams. Now we transfer the sample to a 250ml beaker and add around 150ml of distilled water. We will stir to dissolve the soluble component. In this case, it will be your sodium sulfate. Now this will dissolve in the water and we must visualize that the water molecules are surrounding individual molecules of sodium sulfate. Now we filter, but before we begin, we must ensure that our filter paper is heated dried and weighed multiple times for consistency. This is to ensure that water is not part of the mass. So let's say the mass of our filter paper is 0.95 grams. We will now filter the solution with the aid of a filter funnel and collect the residue. That's the material trapped in the filter paper. Now this is placed in a desiccator which will remove any moisture from the filter paper leaving only the solids trapped. In this case, it should be the barium sulfate. Now once this is completely dry, which can take a while, we have to reweigh the filter paper and the residue it contains. Let's say that the mass of the filter paper plus the residue, which is your barium sulfate, equals 5.12 grams. We can then determine the weight of the barium sulfate. So the mass of the barium sulfate should be 4.17 grams, which is really just the difference. Now we can estimate the percentage of barium sulfate within the mixture like so. Um, it's gonna be the mass of your barium sulfate divided by the mass of the original mixture, which is gonna be 4.17 divided by 5.31, and then we times it by 100 to give us a percentage of 78.5%. Um, therefore, the percentage of your sodium sulfate is the difference, which is gonna be 21.5%. Now this should be reasonably accurate, but as always, there's always going to be errors such as spilling your solution or your residue not being dried correctly. 
Now, the last thing we want to look at with gravimetric analysis is its advantages and disadvantages. Now, the advantage of the, this technique is that it doesn't require expensive equipment and is highly accurate if it's done correctly. So why not try some at home for fun? Um, but it also has its disadvantages. The fact that the analysis can only be achieved on a single or limited group of elements at one time. However, modern instruments can do multiple elements and is super fast, so problem solved. Also, gravimetric analysis is prone to small errors in the procedure. This can lead to vastly incorrect results.